All right, good morning. Welcome everybody to the virtual town hall and our, about our third update, I think. Seems like episode it's three. Episode number three. Uh, different feel on campus this morning. The sun is out. It's beautiful. And uh, it just, it looks great, feels great. I started my day at uh, Harry's in Block 22, and then I just met with a group of outstanding students in a leadership program and just had it just a great way to start the day, I got to tell you that. So, Appreciate everybody tuning in. I mean, you just keep trying to grow the number of folks that tune into this each day. We're also growing our staff, of course. Today we've got Jacob and Selmy running the camera, and Jacob is running the laptop, and Jacob's running the lights, and uh, actually he's monitoring the web stream. So uh, we continue to do this uh, with limited resources, but certainly great talent. And Jacob, appreciate your leadership to get this done. Chris Kelly and your team. Appreciate you getting people aware of it and uh, tuning in. Uh, this morning, as always, we're interested in uh, your comments as we move along. So we'll monitor email and and uh, Jacob, you've got a screen that shows the the email address for Sean. And uh, and so if you've got a question, send that in. If we can't get to it while we're online this morning, we'll certainly uh, uh, provide an answer to you as we go along. So with that, uh, guys. Uh, uh, Sean, you've really been teasing us over the last few weeks that that what happens in Topeka is all based on this uh, this report, the school mm -hmm. finance report, and the consultant. And if you back up a little bit, just remind everybody we've been under a Supreme Court. You know, they found that the school finance formula was unconstitutional. And so, as the legislature got underway this spring, and they decided they were trying to figure out how are they going to respond to that. The, some of the leaders in the Senate decided, well, what we need to do is we need to get a consultant in here and really figure out what does it take to fund K-12. And so they hired this consultant, and then for weeks it seemed like you were telling us March 15th, March 16th, mm -hmm. they're going to release this report. 16th, they're going to make this, this uh, kind of presentation to the uh, legislature. And, and I have to believe that that Senate leadership believed that what was going to happen is they were going to come in and say, well, the Supreme Court may think it's $600 million more for K-12, but I bet these consultants will come in and they'll say, no, it's only $150 million more mm -hmm. or something else, or maybe fully ad it's adequate right now. So I guess the, as we now know that report's out there, and some people have seen that, uh, how did that uh, strategy turn out? Uh, well, I've got to assume it didn't turn out the way that they thought it would. Um, the the and i think part of their sense was is that the, the report that everyone had been relying on to this point that the the, the plaintiff's attorneys had been pointing to was was dated it was uh it was it was several years old and so i think they thought we'll update this and because of the efforts that we've made over the last years including the 300 million dollar increase that they added to k-12 funding uh, last year uh, that that would that would make a difference and in fact uh, you know the the consultant that they hired from texas a&m uh, she had done previous reports in Texas and other places, and the one in Texas had indicated that their funding was adequate. And I think that the folks in the leadership probably thought that our funding was similar, and I think they probably thought it would come back on a smaller number. And it didn't. No. Uh, so what, we, what the report does, for better or for worse, and there can be all kinds of discussion about the adequacy of the report or was it done, all that. I mean, frankly, at this point, it doesn't necessarily really matter that much because it's the most up-to-date data we have. And according to it, I think it has set the parameters uh, of funding that kind of bookends that we're looking at. Yeah. And some big number. I mean, some big numbers. Yeah. Um, and obviously, some of the controversy on this, as I'm sure uh, some of you that are very well informed, I know Stay Connected, have seen some of the controversy is based on the funding being linked to outcomes. So, and that primary metric of outcome is graduation rates. Right. And so, uh, in Kansas, uh, we have an 86% high school graduation rate. Uh, and I don't know if your initial reaction is that's good or bad, but it actually is pretty good. In fact, the highest in the nation is only 91%, and that's Iowa. And so, when the report came out, and you see the big number of $2 billion, $2 billion uh, of additional spending is what the report said, that's to achieve a 95% rate. Which nobody in the country has achieved. Has ever achieved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's 4%, high, it's 4 higher than the highest. Mm -hmm. uh, and $2 billion in additional spending. To put that in context, our entire state general fund budget is not even $7 billion. So this, is a, this will be a significant, a significant increase. Um, and we already, we're, we're in the top third in the country in per people spending. So we've done a good job. And, and we can have debates about how much money is enough. But we're not at the bottom. Right. And right. so, uh, and in fact, as I mentioned last year, they added another $300 million. 
So what the bookend is right now, I think, on the high end, it's $2 billion. I don't think anyone really believes that that's going to happen. I think you, you even on the floor of the Senate, you had the minority leader uh, recognizing we're not right. going to raise a billion, $2 billion. On the low end, it's $450 million. And that $450 million increase is for status quo, is what the consultant says. If you want to maintain the 86% graduation rate, you need $450 million more. And really didn't say in one year. No. So I think already the legislature, as they have now consumed this, they're thinking, how can you do this over multiple years? And what is the number that could be dialed in? Because in essence, we're, they've got to go back to the Supreme Court at the end of April. At the end of the month. And, and the Supreme Court then is going to make a ruling on is that adequate or not. Right. So a little bit of games being played. I mean, just sure. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's trying to figure out what is that number that gets dialed in and what is the right number to provide to K-12 and what can K-12 even spend in a given year that shows up all of a sudden in their budget. I think that's that's a question as well. I'm sure the, the legislators are concerned about that. Yeah, and in fact, even the consultant specifically stated, more or less, don't do this in one year. Mm -hmm. Because the consultant report indicated that the belief that there's no way the schools could spend all the money in one year. And so that report even indicated that there should be a phase in. So I think what you're hearing discussed now is that somewhere between three and seven years, probably depending on, you know, you're dialing the years corresponding to the number, the, the total. Right. So the bigger the number, the longer they're probably going to have to stretch it out. So we've seen the first kind of real serious trial balloon floated, and it's going to actually be debated in the House on Monday. And that came out of the Education Committee this week with no recommendation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the committees can push it out and not endorse. But so that's what happened here just to get it to the floor for debate. And that was a little over $500 million in additional spending over five years. So really, as you look at what's got to happen between now and, and adjournment, there's nothing more important than that conversation, really, in terms of the overall budget. How, much, how many dollars have to be directed in that way to satisfy the court finding? Right. The court signs off on whether it's a year, five years, ten years, whatever it is. That's going to drive a lot of decisions, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So absent, if you think about the, the size of that pie being $6.8 billion, which is a total state general fund spending, and 51 or 52 percent of that is already allocated to K-12, through if you're going to see numbers increase like 450 million or 2 billion, whatever that number is, you've only got two options. You either take bigger slices of other, other pie right. to create that, or you have to raise taxes substantially, which I don't see a substantial tax increase. There's some discussions about online sales, maybe right. taxing that, mm -hmm. uh, which would produce maybe 100, 150 million dollars, which, which would be significant for this purpose. But you know, you're, you're seeing it's already at 52%. If you increase to 2 billion, then you're getting into that 70 plus percent. You're limited on what you can do. So there is nothing more important uh, from the standpoint of what revenue is going to be available for us right. and for roads and exactly. for everybody else. And that's, and that really is the tension that's, that's being created over time. And you can, and you can see it from the general contractors because they care about roads. They want to build roads and certainly the state needs that. We need a strong infrastructure and, and a good infrastructure. You see it from mental health. You see mm -hmm. concerns about it from there. Uh, corrections. Certainly, corrections. Exactly. They've really felt some serious pressures, and uh, and of course in higher education. I mean, we feel like uh, talked to Dr. Flanders the other day, president of the, of the board, and he talked about you know since the 2008-2009 recession, we're down 100 million dollars, and I think everybody recognized when the recession hit, we all needed to tighten our belt. Mm -hmm. That that was a that was a that's something that was bigger than us. It was all across the country. We all need to respond to that. In more recent years, the last uh, you know, $25 million cut, oh, we don't feel the same about it. And so there, there's, there's really, gr I would say, when you say a growing tension uh, where people are looking at K-12, we love K-12, we want mm -hmm. K-12 to be successful. Uh, they, they do have, as you mentioned, a high graduation rate. And when you look at comparisons of math and science uh, scores across Kansas schools versus other states, we really do compare well. And we see that as the, as the kids that we recruit out sure. of Kansas schools. At the same time, higher education is important. And as you and I work every day to try to really make a difference in this, the regional economy and grow this region, we're, we're important for a lot of reasons. Not just the credentials we offer, but the economic impact we have. And so you know the Kansas Board of Regents was on campus uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And they passed a resolution, as you well know, and that resolution was really the strongest statement to date that took a little bit different view of this, of this 
tension of, of this. Uh, the pie is only so big. And, and the region's number one, the number one initiative they have with the legislature, the one, number one thing they advocate for is to restore that $25 million mm -hmm. cut for Pittsburgh State. That's about a, that's about a million dollars. And that's gotten some attention. It has. It's gotten some traction. And so committees have talked about it. Some have talked about instead of restoring all 4% of the cut, maybe they restore 3%. So there is that conversation. But I think the regents are really concerned that it's not getting the traction that they had hoped it would get. And so they came out with a resolution. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read that. Uh, it says, the Kansas Board of Regents resolves that any prospective education investment by the legislature that includes the Kansas K-12 system of public schools must also include the state's public technical colleges, community colleges, and universities. And that's, mm -hmm. and I think that's, that's the point, is if we're going to advance K-12 financially, higher education is as important to the future of the state as K-12. And I'm really pleased that they've stepped up and they've made this. They've made this statement. They showed a lot of courage. But how's how's that been? Uh, how's that been received in, in the capital? Do you think? Um, well, uh, you know, for, I, I, I definitely agree with you that the level of courage that the board has shown in doing this because of the need that we really need do need to stand up for the idea of a continuum of education and a comprehensive view of education in the state, and that includes K through 12 and includes or career tech ed, all of those right. things. Uh, if we're really going to build a strong economy. Uh, I think the best way to characterize the response has been mixed. That's probably the best way to characterize it. I think uh, because of the fact, as you pointed out, this is a new direction for the Board of Regents, uh, a much more aggressive stance than they have taken in the past. I think that's a little jarring to some legislators because they're not used to getting that level of pressure mm -hmm. from higher ed. Right. Uh, the truth is, over the last seven years, uh, we've advocated strongly, but in most ways we've kind of been the nice guy advocate, right? Because um, we made it work. We made it work. As we and we talk about the, uh, you know, the allocation we get from the state. Uh -huh. We're right now we're at the two thousand and and six level. I think Jacob's got it. Got that slide. I mean, it's an, an unbelievable slide in terms of where we were in two thousand six, where we are in two thousand eighteen, and if you just apply the the blue line there shows if you just apply the the CPI. To the state allocation, instead of thirty-four million dollars, we'd have forty-three million dollars. That's an amazing amount of, of dollars that we could be using to enhance salaries, deal with the benefit increases, utility costs are going up. Randy Roberts, our dean of, of libraries, I mean, he is constantly challenged by increasing costs of databases mm -hmm. and and uh, licensing. Our IT infrastructure is challenged because of this differential. So that's what we're talking about. And so we, we've been pretty good about just making it work, making it work, but we're really about the end of the line on that. I think that's, that's where we find ourselves, particularly with the enrollment loss and now the lack of state support. Yeah, and there's only so far that you can make cuts. You can't cut your way to success. We you know can't. that. You can't or to cut, excellence. Or to so excellence. You, you cannot cut your way to excellence. We've been forced to do that. Or our sort of Sophie's choice is you cut your way or you pass on these in substantially increasing costs to students and their families, right. which is what's occurred. And so, and nobody feels good about that. Our faculty just cannot stand that. Uh, we don't like to do it either. And so you're right, the, the choice is, uh, we've got a couple of bad options there. At the same time, we really want to maintain the quality of this experience for the students who come here, who, who want to get that step up in a career and, and get the kind of education they need. It's, a, it's a, been a very difficult decision for us, but we're really running to a point where the decisions going forward are going to be even different than the ones we've made in the past. Yeah. This is where we are. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to come out this afternoon, as you know, with a, with a statement about uh, our feelings about what the regents have done, and we're obviously going to be supportive of that, and really put a local flavor on that. So I hope people will watch for that release. It should be out this afternoon. We'll have some comments from directly from this and our conversation, <clears throat> but we'll also share some broader figures and really set the context for, for what's happened here. And it's a good place to, to mention to people we need their advocacy. For sure. And that means our alums that would be connecting to this, our supporters out there, our donors, uh, we need your advocacy because we reached a really a critical uh, moment in time. And I hope you'll align with the Kansas Board of Regents and align with our efforts to, uh, to see if we can do better in Topeka. because. I firmly believe we deserve to do better. This is a quality Absolutely. place. We've got great people working to make it happen, and they, they deserve be better support and more support than they've received. And Kansas students and families deserve more. They do. And they deserve better. That's exactly right. So with that, I know there's some other things, and we're, we, that, 
that that we've got a chance to cover in the last five or six minutes here. But uh, just quickly, you might remind us where we are on, say, free speech uh, bill that was uh, that was really relevant to the campus. Yeah, we had we had a couple of, there's a couple or three bills that we've been watching. Uh, this has been light load this year from the standpoint of bills that would impact us. Uh, one is this free speech on campus issue that had to do with, uh, in some ways, uh, a reaction to things happening in other places, like right. people, speakers being disinvited uh, California, in Berkeley, or wherever, you know, exactly. or that sort of thing, right. and, and then it being picked up here. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say that that bill, uh, which we saw as negatively impacting, um, ironically, free speech, yeah. um, uh, failed in the Senate on a 20 to 20 vote. So for the session, that bill is it's it's it's, dead for the session. Okay, Uh, and I mean, I guess there's always that possibility. Maybe they slip it in somehow, but it doesn't seem to me. I don't see a path forward for that. Okay. Uh, You then had the gun bill, right? Uh, We've talked at length about that here, and uh, what started as a a reciprocity bill for concealed carry ended up getting loaded up in the House with some additional amendments. Uh, One good, others two others not so good. Uh, the Senate stripped all of those amendments out and then passed the bill as just the reciprocity bill. Um, then, so now it's actually going to conference. So the House position has these lowering the conceal, the concealed carry age to 18, uh, which I think is a very difficult argument in the current environment, of course, especially. Of course, uh, lowering to 18, it has the reciprocity, and then it also, but it also does say that uh, if you're uh, uh, you have to have a permit if you're 18 and 21, and you always have to have a permit if you're coming onto a university right. campus. Right. So we'll see how that shakes out. It's hard for me to see them wanting to have a very public debate about some of those points right, right now. So that could all just kind of disappear. It could disappear or it, it could yeah. make it. Yeah. So, so that's we'll, where we are. And so as always, we'll keep track of that. And then uh, one probably not important to a lot of people, but there's one on performance agreements. And the Emporia State this last year did some work on performance-based budgeting. And so we already really have something like that in place called performance agreements. And, and the, the regents and we've asked, and, and the universities have asked the legislature, let's just stick with the performance agreements. Right. We don't need another layer of this. And I think we're hopeful that that, that will be successful. Yeah, and the that. bill, the performance-based budgeting bill that, would, that uh, this uh, speaks to was passed by the House this week, but it's status quo for us. Right, it exempts us from this, this exactly. other approach. And then briefly on revenues, where, where do you think we are? We're at, uh, we're, we're, you know, fortunately these conversations we're having about additional spending are coming in a year where we actually are above uh, projections. A significant the, amount as well. We're, we're $275 million for the year to date above projections. Uh, there's some promising indicators that that trend will continue, mm-hmm. which obviously helps us from the standpoint of the amount of pressure that it's going to put with for just shifting money within the existing budget as opposed right. to that. Um, and we'll know more April 25th as the Consensus Revenue Estimating Group comes together. That's, as folks know, that is when they will issue their final report for the fiscal year on the revenues for projected revenues. And that is the report on which the legislature must base its bu- its budget. So that's huge. That it's, is, along with the K-12 funding decisions. Those are probably the two this biggest is, things right now. This is big. So we'll really be watching that. And that, that affects the decisions we make. For sure, so, for sure. Okay, and yeah. and Monday the House is taking up the budget bill as well as the K twelve uh, five hundred million dollar increase bill. And what we think, and then after that, this this Friday they'll adjourn for three weeks or so. Is that ne- or, next Friday? Next Friday, yeah, right, a week from today, and then they'll be off, and then they'll come back in the veto session, and that's when it really is going to ramp up. And I think that's definitely when it will do, it will certainly heat up. They, right. they'll, starting next Friday, they'll be off for their sort of spring break for three weeks. They come back on the twenty seventh of April, which is two days after the consensus uh, report revenue report will come out. Uh, and I think that's where uh, you'll see a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, you know, the, you mentioned about the increase or the restoration of our cuts. The Senate Ways and Means Committee had indicated that they wanted to restore 75% of those cuts. Uh, it ended up, for purposes of their debate, right, and their discussion right now, and the bill that passed the Senate this week, it was not included, but the Senate Ways and Means Committee indicated their intent to bring that back up during veto session during the omnibus yeah, budget right, right. so there still is an appetite for it obviously though if the all the air sucked out of the room or all the revenue sucked up yeah. through the k-12 it won't matter right, but right. they se- seem to be having that sense that they want to help to get us right. you know right size and then the other thing we've continued to work on is this uh, the, the, the salary increase that was really not well done so we continue to advocate for that riley had some conversations this week in topeka regarding that 
And that's one of those things that's probably not going to be out there in the public until the very last minute. It might end up at conference committee and somebody throws that in. So just want people to know we're going to continue to advocate for that. There was there was clearly unfairness in the way that right. was done. I think legislators clearly legislators clearly recognize that they'd like to do something about it. It's going to matter. Are the dollars there? Right. What about the K twelve uh, formula? Uh, we don't have much time left, but the the governor's race is uh, really underway now. We've got uh, folks that are coming to campus and been to campus and contacting us, and they want to want to drop by all of a sudden and right. see Pitt State. And, and we understand that. We want, to, we want to promote Pitt State. We want to make sure anybody running for governor has a sense of what we're getting done and what we want to do. So I just let people know that that's, that's out there. There's been some, some people drop out of the race. There's mm-hmm. been some lieutenant governors named. Uh, but we'll, we probably don't have much time to cover that. Yeah. Maybe we can cover that later on. Sure. But speaking of that, uh, we are going to have our track team, our national championship uh, track team, uh, recognized. And I know you and Riley have been working on that. What's the latest on that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's wonderful. It's a great way to end. <laughs> end it was pretty serious. Uh, this is a serious time, but it's nice for us to be able to still point out excellence. Uh, and, and have have some celebration on that. Uh, our track team has now been recognized by the, the city commission this week, which uh, Darren Hall, city manager, indicated that was the highlight of the meeting. <laughs> uh, uh, it certainly was a great moment for our athletes and, and for the coaches who deserve all that uh, all that uh, accolade. Uh, but we've been working on trying to get a resolution in the House and the Senate, and Representatives Mernan and Lusker have really helped us in the House, and uh, Senator Hildebrand in the Senate, and then Governor Collier has been very embracing of doing a proclamation from the governor governor's office but it was hard for us to find a time to get the track team up because the track team is still competing they immediately go to outdoor competition and coach Jewett's not real excited about taking time off practice. He's not. Yeah. You don't, apparently you don't win national championships by taking time yeah, off practice. Yeah, and just driving so, up to Topeka, yeah. getting honors, right. stopping at Culver's for ice cream. Exactly. And, yeah, it just doesn't so, work. So yeah. I, but I, but Riley and I have been very insistent on we want them to get the recognition they deserve. And so uh, we came up with an alternate plan, which was what if we asked Governor Collier to come here? Uh, and uh, during the break so that we knew that the, the two representatives yeah. and Senator Hildebrand are already here. So I'm excited to say, and I want everyone to be there if you're available, a- uh, April 11th at 4.30, we're going to do a, a little recognition uh, with uh, Governor Collier, uh, Representatives Mernan Lusker, and Senator Hildebrand to come and read the proclamation, uh, share the resolution with the athletes and with the community. Uh, we want everyone to come out, and I think it'll be a great moment for those student athletes to, to be able to you know, get people out to support and, and, and to hear from leadership in Topeka saying what you guys do is, is important and we're excited for you too. Right. Very good. That'll, that'll be great. And so, Coach Jewett's okay with the twenty-minute ceremony. Is I that, think so. We've got a, We've got a, It's very compressed. That's it's going to be like, I guess, in between laps. Yeah, maybe. they'll, yeah. they'll in between they'll, sprints, yeah, they'll, and they'll come over and do that. There, there was a suggestion of maybe that that you and Governor Collier should race. Okay, <laughs> so a, maybe we yeah. could do that. It's like he could. He's, he's, he's a distance guy. I, I think guess. so. Yeah. So I don't know. I'll have Bo Faro help me with the shot. <laughs> I'll challenge him to that. Yes. Since my shoulders not as bad as I thought. <laughs> So with that, do we have any questions this morning or anybody? Uh, we, of in? course, I would be disappointed if we didn't have something from Lyndon DeLucky. Our number one fan. Our number one <laughs> fan, right and I, and he did. He he complimented. He's a film buff, as you know. Oh, sure. He complimented my reference to uh, Sophie's Choice. Oh, yeah. Oh, which sure. is a good metaphor. Sure. Uh, I'm yeah. disappointed he didn't mention my podcast. Jacob was over there looking that up, actually. So I know. As we, as we used that, he was but Googling that. Lyndon so DeLucky is sort of like our, our Matt Damon. Yeah. It's sort of, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately. Lyndon, we don't have time today, yeah. uh, but I am still waiting for that mug. Yeah, so so we appreciate you tuning in, though, Lyndon. So uh, or Lyndall, no Lyndon. Lyndon. I always get we've got a Lyndon. We've got well, a we Lyndall, like Lyndall so tuning so in I too. Get, I don't yeah. know if he has. Oh, but. he's probably working. He's working today. He's not yeah. gonna have time to be watching us. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think that's a good look at things where we are. The the, the, the path has changed a little bit. The uh, the tones changed a little bit. I think we all know the stakes are very very high. A lot of decisions to be made. Uh, I've already committed that I'm going to be in Topeka more. Uh, not the most fun place for me to go, but I know that's where I need to be. And so Riley and Sean will be working out kind of the strategy and what, how's the best way to spend my time there. Uh, but very, very important issue. So if you've got other questions as we go through the day or you get away from this and you want to ask us about something or if you watch it online later, just send us a note. You can send it to Sean, you can send it to me, and we'd be glad to respond. So with that, uh, big weekend. It is. Yeah. Easter weekend, yeah. and today's Good Friday, beautiful day out. Beautiful and, uh, day. 
And so we hope everybody's had a good week and that you have a great uh, Easter holiday. Yeah, happy Easter, and uh, don't forget to show up back on Monday. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank Talk you very to you much. Later.